Today I am showcasing the first Deck Doctor video on the channel. I had one person respond to the post that I made, so I'm choosing his deck, or her deck. And um, looking at it on the first glance, I think it has multiple directions it can go, so I'm actually probably going to transform it into two different decks. So. If you want me to continue the Deck Doctor series, could you just leave a few decks that you would like me to doctor in the comments of this video? And uh, hopefully I'll get some more responses. Uh, for this video, I think I'm going to take this deck, split it into basically two ways I could see the deck going. And then I might play some games, I might not, it just depends how long this process takes. And I'm going to break down the deck um, and build it on the spot. So. The first thing that sticks out to me is uh, the class card. So the clash that this class card has with the land doesn't make a lot of sense to me. So if I was going to play Fountain of Magic with a class card, I would play um, Wizards class because, you know, I'm getting spells. Wizard class requires spells for elemental mastery. So that's the first thing that I notice um, when looking at this deck. So I would either change the land or the class to complement each other. And as I scroll through the deck, um, we're very light on early plays that, you know, could stop aggro and aggression uh, effectively. So there's like one crab, not two. There's only one bird's paradise, not two. Um, there's only one scepter, not two. Only one lore keeper, not two. Elvish archer, isn't that bad of an early drop just because it has good stats and it has reach but i would honestly prefer to double up on tusker so i could have more aggressive stats the one giant growth feels kind of out of place to me uh same thing with the one grudge match so it's just kind of all over the place for the early game um if i was going to run giant growth and grudge match i would probably double up on both of them and then also run tarmogoyf instead of maybe the elvish archer the one soul of the wood is seems a little odd, and obviously I think this person, uh, the deck is, you know, budgeted um, because you know they have like a random legendary in here. So I think it's just like the best cards that they have access to. We have the one crusher worms instead of two, and we have the one epitome of might. So what I've been doing in a lot of my lists lately uh, with Kiora is I take out the epitome of might and I just run two crusher worms, and the reason for that is um, the epitome is really slow. And right now, that's and Cure is already a slow spell slinger to begin with. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take out the Epitome of Might and we're gonna double up on the Worms. Also, if your opponent uses Lava Wave or Day of Judgment, that opens the door for um, the Ten Ten with Reach Sneak Ward and can't be countered against Control. So you can like crush a Worms and then let's say you get that on uh, mana ten or fifteen then they're a lot less likely to have a board wipe and you can get that 10 sneak damage through, which could be game changing. Um, this just seems like another brick. So that's another thing you wanna be very mindful of when you're playing Kiora is um, you have to balance out the greed because you're already running ramp cards. And so it's really hard to run you know, your ramp cards, the cards you're ramping to, and then making sure you have enough cards that you don't die. So having stuff like this just really bogs the entire thing down. So uh, the Centaur uh, Archer, it's just a well-statted card, but we don't need it. Um, I like Stag a lot because it helps you fight for the board, which is important in a deck where you need time. So I'm gonna increase that to two. Let's see, uh, Vine Whip Druid is just a really bad card, right? After you get a Mana Gem, it gets plus one, plus one. Like no one cares. It doesn't have enough impact early on. Let's see, uh, the Baby Mammoth, while it's not a bad card, it's just not something that we particularly need. Let's see, um, so first things first, so we want to survive early, so we'll take some of the free spots and we'll kind of sure up this early line here. Um, Scepter is fine, I don't know if it's something I have enough time to run in Kiora. Let's take out the Giant Growth, I haven't made up my mind on it though. Take out the Grudge Match. Try and smooth this out. The Mystic Tome feels very out of place. Um, let's see. Plot something that we might be able to do. 
Let's do let's do the School of the Wizard Kiora first. Since we're already kind of leaning that way. So School of the Wizard, that allows us to keep the plot going. We can actually go ahead and increase the plot to two since now we have School of the Wizard. Let's see. So we can increase Scepter to two because we want to get spells. That justifies Lorekeeper going to two because we want spells. We have Shell Game and we have the Drag Under for spells to count towards our um, Elemental Mastery. Let's see. Not a big fan of the Archer. I am a big fan of Anticipate, I think. Helps us find our big cards. Help us find Ramp and also counts towards our Elemental Mastery, right? Mm, this deck is kind of lacking in draw power. So I think I'm going to actually take out the Plummeter, put in Mage of Insight, just so I can actually get through my deck with any sort of speed. Let's see, what am I light on? I'm a little light on interaction, aren't I? Hmm. Maybe not so light. We do have the Drag Unders, we have Shell Game, we have Scepter that'll give us cards to interact with. We've got Stag. I'm a big fan of Behemoth. I think we're going to go with two Behemoths. Still only have one Tusker. I want to fix that. Maybe we'll drop one Behemoth at Tusker. Hmm. Alright, so we're getting spells from the land, we're getting spells from School of the Wizard itself, Anticipate can find us spells, and we have Plot. So we really don't have that many enablers. So what I'm going to do is, just to make sure I'm not forgetting about anything, I'm just going to filter for spells that cost six or more. So perhaps I need to make room for an opportunity. You know, I'm actually going to take out the Crusher Worms, add one opportunity, and we're going to go up on the Brawling Behemoth. So we're going to make the deck's curve a lot lower. We're going to ramp to Cure's win cons, And we're going to use our spells to close out the game with School of the Wizard along with the Leviathan. I don't think this is unreasonable. I would like to have an alternate win con, however. Hmm. I mean, we do have just so many cards that can naturally trigger it. So let's let's actually remove the scepter. I'm going to save that for the artifact build that I was considering. So let's take out the scepter. Let's put the crusher worms back. I would like to have an alternate way of winning the game. Okay. So we have six spells that can just raw trigger elemental mastery Shell game and drag under will get us four sixths of the way. So that those combined with like anticipate, for example, would get us there. Whatever lore keeper gives us, as long as it costs more than one, would do it as well. I think I like how this first deck is shaping out. I could run scepter over anticipate.
I think I like that actually. Oh, misspelled scepter. Okay, so the scepter combined with the drag under and shell game is probably just more triggers. And we have plenty of fight effects, plenty of removal. We have... How much ramp do we have? Two, two, and two. That's enough. Okay. So I like this version. I think I might play one or two games with it for the video, and then I'll go in and I'll show how I'd make the circle of the druid build. All right, let's see if I can get a win versus the Vraska with our newly built deck. Vraska, I think, is winnable. And off we go. I'm going to keep Tusker and Worms and try and find some ramp. Alright, so there's no way we're getting beat down with Tusker and two crabs, right? And that's why we have them in here. Okay, Circle of the Druid. Kinda wish I had that piece of removal now. But I was expecting Pack of the Warlock if they ran anything. Because they're trying to get finality to triggers on their turn already. No, no, no. Let's save the mana gem. Yep. I will let you just hit me for two. I'm not gonna ramp you two. That's madness. We can have two fatal infections. I didn't expect him to use one on the crab, that's fantastic. Um, not crazy about Plummet getting the discount. I uh, was really hoping for shock. I'm going to take the unsummon in case I need it to get out of a situation. So we need to accelerate our plan here because we don't have a lot of time. When the big dino comes down, it gets scary. Really would like a shell game. Yeah, so we're gonna do this and this. I don't wanna ramp them twice, especially now that the dinosaur's in the deck. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So, pop it. Deal one damage. This isn't terrible. Really would have liked a ramp card. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pick your poison. I doubt they're gonna get plummet from my bird, right? That'd be. They're probably gonna get the um, naturalize for my shrine when I play it, right? That's what I would do. All right, so let's swing. Got to make him trade. Mm -hmm. Let's try and draw our way to shell game. I'm very tempted to use this now. 
I think I will. I gotta get the Elemental Mastery online. I was really hoping to get Turn to Stone for the Dinosaur. Yeah, this is a problem. Now we draw some ramp. So let's say three, four, five, six. That looks right. Not the worst. Let's make our lore keeper a little bigger. So we've got ramp. How refreshing. And then might as well play the lore keeper. Can you keep a secret? Okay. Poke. And then it's gonna heal. <laughs> really, really, really would like a shell game. Even cure signature spell would work here, right? Now I can block with one of my creatures and then Behemoth. See, I would have been interested to grow my Trampler. Oh, that's just gross. Really need shell game now. These two can trade, so I'd rather keep it around. I want to take less damage. I'm going to unsummon it so it loses that Relentless. I'm pretty sure it will. Mm -hmm. Really, really need the shell game. Alright, so... Go away. Attack. Alright. If my land doesn't trigger, I'm probably going to play Crusher Worms next turn. 19 cards left, still two shell games in the deck. Hopefully that'll get it done. Got to mitigate as much damage as possible. I don't care if it's gonna if they have like a stag or something. Yep. See if it has relentless. It does not. Okay. Okay. We found the removal. So now we're going to attack. All right. All right. Now I could block with one of my creatures and then uh, Brawling Behemoth and kill it and save the drag under. Because I'd rather not deal with all this all over again, right? Mm -hmm. Hmm. Okay, well I know which one I'm going to block with now. probably not gonna attack now I'm just gonna sit behind yeah that's smart okay hmm considerations do I bounce the dinosaur and like the relentless creature and just swing out? I think so. Goodbye. There's like someone outside of my house talking. I don't know if that's my neighbors or what. All right. 
Let's get in some damage while I can. I'm thinking about getting them low enough to where the 1010 with sneak could potentially steal the game for me. Or my 5-5s five with sneak. Ooh, oh my, that was, um... That was quite the play, my friend. Now if they resummon the dinosaur, I can drag under the other thing and attack. Very interesting decision. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think he was going to replay it again. Okay, that's basically not a blocker because we can behemoth, give it relentless, and then swing. So he needs at least one more blocker. And if my land doesn't go off, he needs two more because I'm going to behemoth and drag under. Oh, wow. Well. That. Okay, so they did all this. Ah, uh, of course my land goes off. I was really hoping it would not go off this turn. Okay, but they'll probably die to a sneak creature next turn anyway, right? So we are going to... Are we going to Behemoth? Or are we going to drag under... Let's drag under instead. Get um, four six of the way. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so we got the game with the first version of the deck. That was a lot of fun. I thought we had the matchup there. So now I'm going to do the same thing, but I think I'm going to keep it more in the spirit of how they wanted to, more the direction that they would have liked to play the deck. So I'm going to keep Circle of the Druid, and this time I'm going to change the land because it is not the land that I think is the most appropriate for the strategy. So we're trying to not inhibit the ramp of the deck so you know like we have circled the druids we're, we're trying to you know we're gonna get bark hide growth so we're gonna ramp and i don't want to play fountain of magic in a deck where we don't specifically need spells and it would like not to slow down our strategy so i'm gonna go with the portal i think this time yeah i think i like portal i'd either go portal or tropic island i'm gonna keep it portal for now, probably for this video. So, same thing as last time. I don't like the archers. Let's see. I don't like the mammoth, the vine whip druid, the soul of the wood. Mystic tome can go again. I'm not going to do an artifact version. This can go. They might like this card. I might might keep it in. We're gonna take that out. Crusher Worms, I think in all Cura decks is probably the play. So now we've got eight cards. Hmm. Deciding if I wanna go Tarmogoyf or how I wanna play this. So I know I want two crabs regardless. Let's see if we buff Tarmogoyf to two. We add the second giant growth and another grudge match. Tusker has to become a two of. And see this package is just very large and we're already like almost done, right? So stag. Hmm. 
Hmm. And see, so we, we, we barely have any room at all anymore. I'm not sure this is the way to build a successful druid list with Kiora. I just don't think so. So let's back up. I think it's still right to take out the traps and the spells. We definitely don't need Scepter in this version. Let me try something real quick. I still think Behemoth and Stag are good cards. Pretty much in any cure list. So this version has even more reliable ramp. So we've got the Birds of Paradise, the Shrine, the Tide Shapers, not sure how I feel about the plot. Let's see. I think in a version like this, we are trying to just completely overwhelm the opponent. So I like the Titan. I'm not opposed to having the Archmage as another form of winning the game. We're a little light on aggressive early plays, but that might be okay. Let's see. Definitely need to do that at least. We're a little light on our options and we're also very light on draw power. Definitely don't need plot. I still like the Mage of Insight to try and get us through our deck. Hmm. All right, so we've got Crab, obviously Birds of Paradise is going to two. So, oh, we do have Wolf as well, as almost like a guaranteed play early. So that should actually be okay. So we've got two, four, six, eight, yeah, so Almost a tenth of the deck is early. That's fine. We have some draw power here. Uh, ramping will get us two Kiora. Uh, as Leviathans, the portal can give us some cards. I actually kind of like how this version is right now, actually. All right, so let's try a more uh, beefy, kind of in-your-face, kind of in the circle of the Druid-styled uh, deck, right? Yeah, let's see how this works. Okay, it's a fairy. If they are running the second sun version, I don't think we can win. Unless we just, you know, get them early and they don't see the second sun. That gets rid of our 10-10 with sneak. Yeah, they're running the Fountain of Magic, so they're probably running the School of the Wizard, right? I don't need these cards. I need to ramp. That's That's... Very nice. Hello, they probably have spheres um, to stop our Leviathan. Seek knowledge. Yeah. And this is why I favor the other version of Kiora. It has more legs against things like this. Alright, so Birds of Paradise.
Okay, I want to play the wolf so I can get my ramp spell. If they pass, I might just poke with the wolf and summon Tusker. That's basically them passing, just better. Please and thank you. Okay, so I want to see if they did absorb. They did not do absorb. Okay. Couldn't really risk it there. It was glare. Okay. It's a very weird thing to do considering it wouldn't trade anyway. But I had to know. I didn't want to play this into absorb and lose our um, ramp spell and lose our dinosaur. Yeah, I was going to say, I will block that all day. Alright, so now that the coast is clear, I think we just take this opportunity to ramp twice. That's fine. You know, the proper thing to do there might not have been, it might have been just to pass. And then if they did have that there, it wouldn't proc and wouldn't get them closer to drawing more cards. That is quite the discounted spell there. I'm actually going to try not to take damage because they're, there's no way they're not running the second sun, right? Give me a moment to stretch first. Okay, this just plays into all the removal. So I think I would rather do this keep a secret? and then do this. All are connected. Interesting. No what? Oh. Hello, large friend. Uh, I knew the octoplum alert was coming up soon. I probably should have tried to save the fish and grow it. Ah, of course. Guess it would not have mattered. Boundless potential. Mm -hmm. Let's see, we're already like starving for cards. Yeah, Spark of Genius is pretty good. I brought back up. Very nice. While the shields are down, we're going to bounce both things. An attack for four. Maybe bouncing the four seven wasn't the best move, but I do have a seven seven. When you're down on cards like this, you can't just do nothing. That's pretty good. I can't take the risk that it's absorb. I want to know. I oh, bluffed. Okay. Okay, it was another emulating glare, and not absorb. So the glares are gone. Now I have to worry about absorb whenever I have nothing but giant creatures. Seeing shawl game go is good news. The elements. Yeah. Now the shields are down, so I'm going to go in for eight when I can. Not that he doesn't have just a removal spell, right? Mm. 
actually think this is better. I'm gonna use this after he board wipes me. Yeah, works for me. Okay. Now I'm expecting the Day of Judgment, and then I can summon her afterwards, but then she's just going to get removed by a plethora of things, right? What's he drafting for? Okay. Interesting. Alright. Another portal. Don't want to overcommit to the board because of the day of judgment. I think without portal, you know, our draws wouldn't have been very good. Not as good as this anyway. Okay, that's interesting. Is fling a random enemy? I think it is. No, to an enemy. So he just wanted the armor gone. Interesting. Okay, so is he looking for disorient? To weaken this? I mean, I'm still gonna poke with it, right? So first things first, let's see if we have absorb. There's the absorb. Okay. Let's attack for eight again. Let's get me closer to 20. I'm going to get to 15 regardless next turn. Okay. Could be worse. Now if he uses the board wipe here, then I'm going to play this and hope he doesn't have a second one. He's drawn so much, there's no way he doesn't have it at this point. Yeah, he's just attacking with everything because he's got the board wipe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I am going to play this when Absorb is down. Okay. He's out. So he has a Disorient in the hand. Because I've only seen one. There's no way he only runs one, right? Maybe he does only run one. Glares are already gone. He should have kept the glare for this because glare does not target. Nope. Try again. Zero cost absorb, okay. Attack. Let's do it. Okay. Not sure how we're going to get the last bit of damage through at all. I think this is where we're just out of gas, unless we get some kind of legendary that does damage or has sneak or something, and we get lucky by dodging removal. Yeah. And then there's the second sun going into the deck. And he does, I mean, he has what? Yeah, has over 10% chance of pulling it every turn. So I think this is just a wrap here. You're not going to attack with anything. I don't know why people do this obnoxious stuff. Alright, let's see. Not quite what I want. I'll swing with the big boys before everything dies anyway. 
right on time. Yeah, and then that's just going to bring him very close to second sun, and then he'll get a 5 5 with sneak, and then I die. So all he has to do is play second sun, and I lose, right? Mm hmm. Yep. How to get through it? Well done. Uh, I'm not gonna do any good rotting in my hand, right? The second son, I'm dead anyway. So I mean, he's probably just gonna attack and then second son. My dinosaur actually will take the the damage from that. I forgot about that. All right, so let's cancel y'all out. Let's pass. Dino goes to one. Yep. I mean, even if the Dino took the damage, I'd still have a 5 5 with Sneak to contend with, right? I want it all to go on this because I don't want it to go on a creature that can't even swing. Yep. Okay. Now, Second Sun doesn't kill it, which is kind of funny. And I think he's out of Shell Games and Emulating Glares. But I'm still dead because it has Sneak. Yeah. Yep, and that's how I thought this game would go. Alright. Well, that's the Deck Doctor video. I think that was just a bad matchup. I think that Cura list has legs against um, more creature-based strategies that are aggressive mid-range strats. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope I did his deck justice, giving him two different versions. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow.